that sort of brings me to my first question. Question. Already messed up. Hi everybody, my name is Rosaline. Welcome back to my channel, Back to Chubby. Today is another Q&A, so in addition to weighing in, I'll also be answering some of the questions that you guys have sent me, um, whether it's in the comments or over Instagram or Snapchat or Twitter, etc. Um, so first, before we do anything else, let's go ahead and get the weigh-in out of the way. Hello. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about that number real quick. If this is your first time here, or if you haven't seen a weigh-in, or if you're just not sure what kind of progress I've been making, let me break it down a little bit for you. This week, I only, well, I'm not sure if it's this week or last week, over the past two weeks, I've only lost 0.4 pounds, which isn't great, but at least it's moving in the right direction. I don't know if it was last week that I didn't do great or this week or if it was the weekend in between which I'm I'm betting that was probably it when we had some people down and excuses aren't the point it's not as good as I'd like it to be but all I can do is keep trying overall I started at 435 pounds back in September so as of this weigh-in that means I've lost 73.2 pounds which is about 26.4 percent of the way to my goal uh, my goal weight for me is 158 pounds, uh, which overall means that from my starting weight of 435, I needed to lose 277 pounds. Of that, I still have 203.8 pounds left. And running through those numbers sort of brings me to my first question, which uh, is, do I have those written down somewhere off screen or do I just sort of have a good memory for numbers? I mean, I have it written down, uh, but it's mostly just for reference and to do some math so that I can know like how much of the weight I need to lose have I lost, so 26.4%, etc. So I do write it down and do the math and then I try and just go off the top of my head, um, but I certainly do have to double check myself from time to time. So from there, let's go ahead and lead into some of the questions. And the first one that I've gotten, which isn't really a question so much as a comment, um, is from multiple people who think that I need more protein in my diet. Um, and this last week's meal plan, for example, has 99 grams of protein per day. So I guess I just wanted to touch on real quick that in addition to meat, there are other um, sources of protein you can incorporate. So this past week I did have tuna, and then we also had smoked pork and then on top of that, we had eggs and avocado and butter and sour cream. And there's also a little bit of protein in mushrooms and in some vegetables. So overall, I was coming in just a little bit under what my fitness pal says my protein goal should be for a day. So I feel like I'm, I'm doing okay. Um, even when there's not a lot of meat, that sort of leads into another question. Well, two questions. Do I use my fitness pal to track calories? So yes, I do, and someone was asking both for me and I think sort of in a more general sense, do you track calories or macros or both and what should you track? Is it an either or kind of thing? For me, it's both. I use my fitness pal and then I use the guidelines they give me to try and stay within certain limits or hit certain ranges um, of my macros while still keeping my calories within a certain limit. Also on a similar note, someone asked how many calories I have per day. <laughs> for me, it varies. Generally, I range between 1,400 and 1,800 calories for a meal plan. Lately, it's been closer to 1,500 to 1,600 calories, and I haven't been so good about moving it up and down that short little scale, uh, just because it's easier, which is probably why I keep plateauing. <laughs> Um, but then on the weekends, I generally try and keep it under 2,000 calories, which is about what my fitness pal says my max should be for a day. And I also try and look at the macros. So for me, it's sort of a balancing thing. Some people who have metabolisms that aren't damaged can just count calories or just focus on the macros, and they're fine. For me, it has to be sort of a both thing. 
And the reason for that, and I will link to another video up here or down below, the reason for that is that I have PCOS and insulin resistance, which means that my body will burn different fuels differently. So your macros are essentially different types of fuel source for your body. Uh, fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. And they all basically serve a little bit different of functions. Um, whether it's helping you build muscle mass and connective tissue or lubricating your joints um, or just plain fuel, my body can more readily burn protein and fat than it can carbohydrates, which it has a hard time breaking down. So often that gets stored as fat on my body. So I am more wary of keeping my carbohydrates moderate than I am worried about going over my fat or protein. And I don't try and do low carb really right now, but I am trying to do less processed carbs. So that was sort of an overly complicated answer to your question. I track both. I kind of have to track both. If I just worry about the calories, for me, the easiest way to get my calories in is to eat a bunch of carbs, um, processed carbs. And it's the cheapest way, and it's the fastest way, and I would love to just have some macaroni and cheese, but my body doesn't respond well to that. If you have a normal functioning metabolism and your body can process most things, you might be okay just counting calories. But I would suggest to give it a look, like maybe use my fitness pal or spark people or something like that, and maybe see what kind of macros you're already eating. Uh, so if you're trying to reduce your calories already and it's not really working that well um, and you notice that you've got a lot of carbs in your diet, that might be your issue. And I'm not saying to just go ahead and cut out all carbs. You probably want to talk to your doctor or maybe get some things checked or have a blood panel ran, but it really depends on the person. I should have just said it depends on the person. Another uh, comment that I've gotten recently, and I think this was because I mentioned that I don't really notice the weight loss myself so much is that a lot of people have mentioned and not just in the last video but probably in the past several months that i should take a new profile picture because that one looks quite a bit heavier than me and it's kind of funny to me because i think that picture was taken about four or five years ago when i was about this weight and the thing is that it's all about angles so generally speaking straight on I don't have as much of a double chin as I started. Well, I mean, I still have the chin, but it's not as noticeable. Like in, if I put my head down, you can see it more. And if I pull it back, you can see it more. Um, and if I turn my head to the side, you can see it more. So that profile picture is from the side. So it's actually about as heavy as I am now. Well, it was from the side and then I had my shoulder up kind of so it's actually kind of accurate uh, it's just not that flattering but for a long time it's been the best picture I have of myself so yeah maybe I do need a different profile picture on the topic of weight and how my body's changed or not uh, a lot of people have asked if I've started measuring and what my measurements are. I don't really feel comfortable <laughs> sharing my measurements yet, but let's basically say I'm about as big around as I am tall at this point. I did finally start measuring. A couple weeks ago I decided I was going to take a week off from weighing because I was just stressing out about it all the time. Uh, <laughs> and so while I was trying to not stress about it, I decided to finally measure myself instead. I have measured myself once. I haven't done it again, but I also haven't lost very much since then. And I know that sometimes your measurements can fluctuate when the scale doesn't fluctuate, but it was a little bit disheartening. So knowing me and knowing how I will get frustrated and quit <laughs> sometimes, I've decided to wait until I've lost a little bit more weight um, so I can see at least a semi-substantial difference on the tape measure the next time I measure myself. On a related note, when am I going to post uh, full body pictures? The last full body pictures I took were at 411 pounds and I haven't taken them since then. I probably won't post those pictures until I've lost at least 100 pounds. 
And the reason for that is because I'm sure I'm going to end up on some Reddit board somewhere or a specific website that just loves to hate me because I'm fat. I'm just going to wait till there's a little bit more difference. And I also might not put them on YouTube, I might put them on Instagram or something first. But when that time comes, I'll let you guys know. Before I go on, there was another question I got that I feel does deserve to be addressed, but I don't think I'm going to do it in this video. And it was essentially about weight, weight changes, weight loss, and intimacy. And I don't feel that that's something I should talk about without talking about it with Josh first. And I'm not going to share anything uh, between the two of us on here unless he's cool with it. And if he's not cool with it, I'm not going to share it. But I do think that that's something that doesn't get talked about very much because it is so private. And I don't think it's like an invasive question by any means. I just think that's not my decision to make. So someday I might address it or I might address it in a more broad sense without giving any details of our life. Two sort of related questions that I've gotten repeatedly are how do you keep up your motivation or the willpower to keep going and how do you get up the willpower to start moving around more? Like especially when you have pain moving around more is hard. And for me, I made the choice not to start moving around more until I had lost a significant amount of weight. And even still, I am moving around more. I'm definitely working outside more and around the house more and getting things done that have needed to be done around here for ages. Um, and like today, Josh and I took a walk about five blocks away to go to a store rather than driving there. So little changes like that have been pretty big for me. If it hurts to move around, or if moving around is exhausting for you, or just wearying if you're in pain, try taking off some weight first, and then you might be surprised one day you stand up and start moving around, and it's just easier to breathe. And I don't know if anybody else experiences this, like sometimes I'll have the kind of pain, especially in my knees, that will make my breath catch. <laughs> well, if you're already huffing and puffing just from standing up and walking around, and then you can't catch your breath because you're in pain, you're gonna be screwed and you're not gonna wanna move at all. So I say try dropping some weight and then maybe it'll at least be easier to move and it'll be easier to breathe through the pain. At least it was for me. As far as keeping up your willpower and your motivation, Sometimes I don't. <laughs> I have to sort of continuously try and refine that willpower and motivation. Basically have to just try and transform the things that are making me want to quit into fuel to make me want to keep going. Sometimes it's especially discouraging when you'll see other people who have lost 100 pounds in six months or they lost 160 pounds in a year. And I'm coming up on 10 months and I've lost just over 70 pounds but I started at a bigger weight than they did and it seems like I should have dropped more than they did and it seems like I should be pulling down bigger numbers at my size and at the amount of calories I'm eating. Sometimes that willpower and the motivation just aren't gonna be there. Everything's gonna suck and you're gonna wanna quit. And the only thing you can do is whine about it and move on because if you just whine about it and quit or just quit, for one thing, if you quit, you don't really have a right to whine about it, I feel. I probably would because I'm kind of whiny sometimes, but you have to make the choice between feeling sorry for yourself and quitting and essentially being a hypocrite because you're the one who put you in the situation to make you feel sorry for yourself or feeling sorry for yourself because it's hard but not giving up and then at least not having that sort of self blame as on top of everything else going wrong. Gosh, I'm rambly. I hope that in any way answered any questions that were asked there. Do I watch my older videos? Um, sometimes. Not usually older, older. Usually the reason I look back at videos lately, they're more recent videos and it's if someone makes a comment and I'm like, what are you talking about? Like maybe they, di they didn't understand something in the video or I didn't understand what they were talking about in the video or they'll say something that I said and I'm like, did I, what? Um, so then I'll have to refer back to that. But otherwise, like my older, older videos, I have not watched and people keep telling me I should just like for reference or to see how far I've come. Um, but I, 
find them kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> I find most of my videos kind of uncomfortable, really. Uh, do I have any tips for working out with an apron belly or any tips for like clothing or something? I, too, get really embarrassed by my apron belly and it's probably the thing I hate about my body the most. Um, and mine doesn't come as far out or down now as it did. Okay, maybe I should take some more pictures so I can clearly see it. But when I started, it was basically down to my knees and now it's about this much higher. And um, also when I sit down now, it's about this far from the end of my knees, whereas when I started, it would be out to the edge of my knees. I tend to wear looser clothes or like I also have several dresses that I like that I got from Swack, S-W-A-K, sealed with a kiss, designs, whatever. They're a website where I could order things and they had dresses up to 6X sometimes. The area around my rib cage is a little bit smaller than down lower uh, and then it just sort of skims over my belly. Um, I also have a lot of really long shirts. Unfortunately, cold hard truth is if you have an apron belly people are gonna know and as far as exercising goes I recommend maybe getting into a pool because it will lift some of that weight especially off of your spine and then off of your lower joints and a lot of people I think without apron bellies don't really realize how hard it is just to move around um, because everything you do has extra resistance to it so imagine if you don't have an apron belly, that you were going to try and take a step forward, but there was a weight pushing down and back on your leg for every step you took. And if you wanted to go upstairs, you had to lift a weight up and forward as you moved with your leg. Or if you wanted to do seated exercises where you just extend your leg out, then your apron belly would be pushing down on your muscles. So it's like trying to exercise a muscle that's being compressed when we're talking like about your quads or something. So it's a little bit exhausting just to move around and it pulls on your spine, it makes your posture bad, pulls on your hips. When you sit down, it really pushes and spreads out your hips and not in a good way. So I do think that seated exercises or sometimes lying down exercises are really well. Like if you're on your side or your back, um, like leg lifts, things like that. I try and stay off of your knees if you're like me. I tried to do one of those exercises the other day where you're like down on all fours, like your hands and knees, and you kick your leg out behind yourself, and my knee made the worst noise, and then I had to use my cane again for the rest of the day for the first time in a long time. So long story short, try and stay off your knees until you weigh less, and just try and do what you can. If it's really hard to move around, if you're um, super morbidly obese like me, it also might help you just to start standing up for a few minutes at a time. If you find yourself sitting most of the time, just start by just standing up all the time, working those back muscles to hold yourself up and straight. Maybe try sucking in your stomach and that'll help lift that belly off of your leg muscles a little bit. I know it's exhausting. It's exhausting just talking about it. <laughs> but all you can do is little things. I hope that helps it all. On a related note, since I recommended swimming, and I think someone asked a long time ago where I got my swimsuits, um, I have one right now that fits pretty well. It's from the company that owns like Catherine's and Lane Bryant and all of those things. They just changed their name and I can't think of it. Just Google Catherine's uh, plus size stores. And there's a company that owns them and a whole bunch of other plus size places. Um, and so they do have a website where you can sort of search all the plus size stores at once and that's where I found it. It does not cover my apron belly all the way so I also have some swim shorts that I wear under it. It's sort of like a one piece swim dress looking thing and then I have swim shorts also. Uh, do I have a goal outfit? Not particularly. What I would really really like to do someday is get down to my goal weight and have my wedding dress taken in or maybe use some of the spare fabric I have from when we made my wedding dress, my grandma made my wedding dress, and um, maybe make a smaller 
version of it and have some of our wedding pictures retaken. Have I tried the Whole30 or the potato diet, which are two different questions. Um, I've not tried either of them. Before I started this channel, and so this go around, what was the most I was ever able to lose? Um, I think about 30 pounds. And it was when I was doing juicing. So if you guys have ever seen the documentary, like Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, um, I did nothing but juice for 20 something days and I lost quite a bit of weight and then I continued after that and it was very up and down and up and down after that so I think altogether I maybe lost 30 and then it just went up from there and never came back down until this time around. What was the best moment in the past 40 odd weeks um, on or off camera? I'd probably say when Josh and I went to Colorado and I was able to actually walk around and do things like we went to Manitou Springs and I walked around for five hours without really needing to sit down that often. I think I sat down two or three times and we went to the Garden of the Gods and I was able to do our little half mile loop thing which was great and we walked up and around and across at the Royal Gorge. We did a really long steep trek there for me and I was just happy to actually be able to do something like that for once or for the first time in a long time rather. What was my moment that made me decide that I was going to start doing this? Uh, like like what, what was my why moment? I think it was a lot of little moments building up and a lot of little and big embarrassments building up. I've let it be known on this channel before that I do want to have children. I'm 30 years old. I started this channel the day after my 30th birthday. I had just graduated with my master's, um, like back in May of last year, in 2016, I graduated with my master's and I went on a road trip uh, out to Oregon to see one of my cousins and back. I was afraid I wasn't gonna fit in the car that I rented. I had to rent an SUV to make sure I could fit into the car. Their definition of an SUV and mine are different, and so on the way there and the way back, um, over several thousand miles, I got a welt all the way across my apron belly, and I mean like a blistering, filled with liquid welt, because it was rubbing into my stomach. Um, when I got there, I wasn't able to do very much. We went out to Crater Lake and we basically got there and we got out and took some pictures and I couldn't actually go down to the water. And like we wanted to do the boat tours on the lake, I couldn't make the hike down there. There was just a lot of stuff like that. Every time I would fly somewhere, I would have to bring my... I bought my own seatbelt extender because there's never a guarantee that the airplanes will have one. There's never a guarantee that you won't get kicked off a flight or have to pay for two seats and I can never afford that. Which is part of the reason I drove out to Oregon in the first place is because I didn't want to take the chance of having to spend five or six hundred dollars and then another five or six hundred dollars or being kicked off the flight and not even being able to go and having all these plans and every time. I couldn't shop in a store, I didn't feel attractive, I knew that in addition to my fertility issues, my weight was keeping me from being able to have children. I just didn't feel like myself, or rather I sort of felt trapped in myself. I weighed about a week before my birthday because I felt like I was just, I just felt awful. And sure enough, it was the heaviest I'd ever been. And it wasn't like an all of a sudden thing, it was a very gradual thing. It was like when I was younger and I was just a little bit chubby, like around 158, I was like, well, as long as I don't hit 175, I'll be fine. And then I hit 175, I'm like, oh crap. Huh. And like I would try things and it didn't seem to be working and I'd be like, well, as long as I don't hit 200. And then eventually I hit 200. And then I had weird little things in there. Well, as long as I don't have back fat rolls, 
plenty of those now. As long as I don't hit 250, as long as I don't have this or that, or as long as I can still do this, or as long as I don't have that, as long as I don't hit 300, as long as I don't hit 350, as long as I don't hit 400, and then I was at 435. I'm, I, okay. I know there's a lot of people who love and appreciate their bodies no matter what size they are, and I say good for them. And I'm not trying to be sarcastic. If I was happy with my size or my weight, there wouldn't be a channel right now. But in my opinion, I can't believe I was ever at a point where I was like, at least I'm not 400 pounds. Like, that's a pretty low slash high bar. That's, that's not, and I had other things I focused on and other things I spent my energy on and I let that be an excuse and I let that be my reasoning uh, behind letting myself go because I spent all my energy and time and money and patience on other stuff. I feel like I got off track. What was the question? What was the question? What was my why moment? I just finished a huge phase of my life and I felt like at that point I shouldn't be how I was. I felt like 30 years old, I'm married, I have a house, I have a car, I'm fairly secure, I have my degree, I can do what I want, I can work where I want, I should be able to, this should be like the prime of my life. And it just wasn't. Let's lighten things up a little bit. I've gotten this several times. Did I design my logo, which is like a curvier woman trapped in a body like mine. Yeah, I did. Um, I just used a tablet and made it digitally and maybe when I do some more pictures, I'll update it again. Maybe add another line in between those two. I don't know. But yeah, I drew it quite a while ago actually. Now that I've lost 70 pounds, what's my favorite thing to do? Um, probably actually work on the house. There's all kinds of stuff I just haven't been able to do. I haven't been able to do. I haven't been making myself do or felt too exhausted to do. Just little things here and there. I fixed my car air conditioner the other day and I fixed the lawnmower and I've been do well trying to get our back porch ready to fix and like like actually taking care of my home. Like I'm trying to learn to take care of my body, like trying to learn to take pride in both of those, that's probably been my favorite thing right now. It's sort of a multi-part question. Um, how did I like London and was there a lot of culture shock and did I change my eating habits while I was there and did I go to uh, continental Europe? Do I have any more travel plans and would I ever consider moving to Europe? I loved my trip to London. It was a little bit weird because at that point I was already married and so Josh was here while I went to London with a school trip for about two weeks. It's another one of those things where I would have felt better if I had been in better shape. I spent a lot of the time there by myself going around London because I didn't want to be with a group because I'd be too embarrassed to walk with them or make them slow down or make them stop for me. When I was there, I almost uh, tried going to another country, like one of the really close countries. Like a flight from London to one of the neighboring countries was only gonna be like 70 pounds or something, which is amazing. Uh, but I chickened out and figured something would go wrong and I'd get stranded there by, by myself. <laughs> So I didn't do that. We did go to like Stonehenge and Salisbury Cathedral and there was a trip to Bath. So we didn't stay right around London. We didn't stay right in London, but um, we didn't actually leave England. There was not as much culture shock as I would expect. I was probably spending a lot of my time trying to not reinforce the stereotypes that people in other countries have about Americans, but just by being there at 300 something pounds, I was. <laughs> so, whoops. My eating habits did change a little bit. For one thing, everything here in the United States, like if you get a drink, there's gonna be free refills and you're gonna have ice in it. 
and it's gonna be cold and it's gonna be a lot bigger. Every time I would get off at whatever station, especially if I was going back to the hostel or leaving the hostel, I would pop into a shop that was on the way and buy like six or seven bottles of water because I also couldn't find anywhere to refill bottles of water. I had a lot of fun. I was really shocked at the prices of food and the way things worked. In fact, so we went as a class and people had to do presentations on things there. So I was actually doing a presentation on art as a part of daily life in London and how it changes the landscape and the feel of things and how it's been used to help combat depression and stuff for its citizens. We're not, we're not gonna get into all this. Um, and another person did it specifically over the dietary differences between America and England. So for example, if I were to go into a gas station here, so a petrol station or a convenience store, here in my town, if I want to get an apple, like one apple, it's going to be a dollar to a dollar fifty. If I want to get a box of three packs of Pop Tarts, so six actual Pop Tarts total, that's also a dollar. Whereas at the convenience store that was near our hostel, I could get an apple for 25 pence and the same size box of Pop-Tarts was close to six pounds, which was great. So like all of the healthy stuff there was way less expensive than it is here. And all of the crap stuff there was way more expensive than it is here. It was like flipped and reversed. There's also no corn syrup there. The food, the food was probably a big difference. Anyway, I think I've spent enough time on this question. This video is probably gonna go up on Saturday. I'm realizing right now because I've been recording for a while. I would love to go back to Europe. I especially want to go to Norway someday. Um, a lot of my family is from there and it seems beautiful and let's move on to another question. Um, I like to read. If you, if you didn't know, I'm, I'm filming by a bookcase here in our room. So I do like to read. So what are some of the types of books I like to read? I like a lot of stuff. I'm not real into um, action or like historical. I say I'm not into historical novels, but for example, there's this one that I really like called The Worst Hard Time that's about the Dust Bowl here in America, specifically the Midwest where I live, that I find really fascinating. Um, I also like a lot of memoir. My Favorites are probably speculative fiction, so science fiction and fantasy. Um, I probably lean a little bit more towards fantasy, but it depends on what it is. Romance is probably my bottom rung. I would rather, nine times out of ten, I would probably rather read a textbook than a romance book. I don't know why. Anyway, okay, that was a lot of questions. This video is probably going to be kind of long. Um, which wasn't my intention. I intended to try and get on here and actually just give some short snappy answers to some questions and then move along, but that's just apparently not who I am. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here <laughs> for today. It's probably gonna go up on Saturday, which is day late, and I'm sorry about that. Um, but just as a reminder, you guys can find me on social media with the username Back to Chubby. If you have any other questions you'd like me to answer in the future, go ahead and leave them in the comment box down below or find me on one of those social media platforms. Um, if you aren't a big social media user but you still want to contact me, I do have a P.O. box which you can find uh, the information for down in the description box below. I'm sure there's something else I should say here but I don't remember what it is. So I hope wherever you guys are you are safe and happy and healthy. Remember to just keep trying the best you can and I will see you next week. Bye.